sweet. Here's the wife's car. Oh, brand new tires for a hundred bucks. I'll tell you the story on these. Um, a while back I'd gone to the junkyard and I put aside two tires for her car. And uh, one of the tire guys came in and he took them. So, today I was there and somebody says, hey, these tires are put aside for the tire guy. So I took all four. Mwah. I, uh, I grabbed one of these off of a, I think it was a Ford, um, oh, what the hell was it? It was like a like an Escort type thing. It doesn't matter. They never changed this logo in 100 years. Um, I had seen something on the front of a rat rod car, and um, I want to duplicate it. But this is my start. I have the other half of it here somewhere if I can find it. I have Jaguar. I have Camaro. Here it is. I got a couple of these. This is going to be the other half of it. I wish it was a little smaller, but if uh, if I can, what we're going to do is turn this into a spider, and it's going to be wrapping this sucker up in um, bailing wire. There's a picture I'd found on the internet. I don't know where, but it was pretty cool. I had a giant lug nut, and he turned it into a. Um, it was a giant nut. He turned it into a spider, and it was wrapping up a Ford logo in, in bailing wire. I thought that was a riot, but that's my start of uh, my idea. I went to the junkyard. There was a um, oh, a guy did uh, floor installations. Another drill, just like this. So now I have two. I noticed that it was sparking inside here. It needs brushes, but that's not hard to do. I don't know why people throw them out. This was my collection from the junkyard. I got some more halogen lights. There was a thing of uh, all kinds of like sockets and stuff. A little cheapy sets. A bunch of drill bits in it. <clears throat> and a bunch of um, nuts and sockets. I mean, what do you call them? Torx. Torx head screwdriver bits. Flathead screwdriver. Gay pens. <clears throat> Fuses and relays I ripped out of an Escort. I actually needed that light bulb for the Weiss car. Um, relays and stuff. I'll, I'll, I know what they're for. Nuts and bolts in here too. Just things to add to the collection. And now uh, this is how they work. Pretend that's the face of the uh, A pillar on the door. That's how far it opens. Here's the other one. I'm going to put it on. That's going to be a real struggle. They're kind of, you couldn't open them by hand, but you put them on the car, you can open them. So I'm guessing when you put the door on, it'd be a lot easier to open. But there's my door. I'm going to try and hang it on these hinges and see how it lines up. I might have to drill the holes in the A pillar on the firewall just a little bit bigger to get them to move some more, but we'll see. It's like 7.30 in the morning. I shouldn't be making noise, but oh well. This one's on. I only have like three screws holding this door on right now. And if you remember, the bottom is pulled out because the weld is broken right here. I gotta suck all that in and tack it down. But uh, I gotta show you something here. Da, da, da. The door is closed. How's that? Now, the bottom, like I said, is coming out a little bit top like right here is almost perfect just got to go back like an eighth of an inch I mean a washer could do that up here it's just a little misaligned that's because I got to pull the bottom out a little but like I said these holes on the A pillar have to be opened up a little so I can have some play if I roll that hinge around the corner a little actually if I shim that hinge out that puppy will pull right out but now it's all about the shimming 
pulling in that bottom welding it and shimming now the bottom of my door is good <clears throat> five inches of it was completely rotted um understand i'm missing rockers and all kinds of things because that that stuff disappears on a chevy um no reason i couldn't make the entire bottom of this door but we'll see what happens um but at least i have a, a vantage point now and it's pretty close Um, sometimes you see cars like this, they have literally no no bottom edge whatsoever. People cut it off, and then they just shorten the door like this, roll it over, and then they stick something underneath, and then connect the front to the rear, and that's how they hang their doors. I don't know yet. We'll see. I think it'll look kind of weird. Now, the bottom of this panel has to be pulled out. Um, I have nothing but V pellets, just sheet metal. But isn't that cool to see? Now that's how far the door opens because the way I designed it, it had those um, backstops. I'll show you how it works. Can we go that far? And I mean, if you don't whip it open, it'll be fine. I wish it would go click, but it won't. You know, let's see. Pretty close. Pretty close. Bad at all. Damn airplanes, man. They're killing me. What if I bent that one forward a little? Hmm, not much either. I have to make marks and uh, bend a few things because they they are perfectly flat with the firewall right now and they, they really shouldn't be. They should be tweaked a little towards the front. I really don't want to cut them and bend them anymore. So we'll have to shim them and tilt them. This plate is a uh, 16 gauge. Now I had no idea where the top was going to end, so I just left it like this. I can always add on to it without messing with it too much. This came with the hinges. I don't want to cover all this stuff, but I'm a long way from that. It's just cool to see a door on. I wish I could close it and watch it go click. You couldn't jump this door. This sucker's got to be three feet high. But for a car that had nothing but wood, this looks pretty good. Um, I kid you not, with two bolts right here, one here, and one here, these little socket heads, the whole internal framework could come right out. Um, the only thing holding it to the front right now is the fact that it lips over the sheet metal, the original metal that was here, which is really thick. I think it's 316. But it's all pressed out to fit the car, and all these spots have been sandblasted and uh, welded up. And then I added one by one, and I made like a double layer of door to beef it up. I went from the closest I could get to the front of the panel on the stock mount right here. Then I went down the bottom and made a brace in the same spot. And I was like, that's kind of thin. And what I did is I took the depth here and I set the one by one on the edge. And I tacked it on. Went back here and I made the panel the same width because, I mean, I had nothing to go by. I didn't even have the wood. It was so rotted. And here's where it ends up. It's that close to the dash. It's probably, you know, three quarters of an inch, three eighths of an inch away. Uh, all this stuff was nailed to wood. Well, actually, these were spot welded to the metal plate. But, uh, you know, you had wooden pieces everywhere in this car. I cannot believe the airplanes this morning. I don't notice them until I'm doing a video, you know. But it's nice and quiet, it's very easy. And we only have oh, about 45, 50 degrees. That's easy enough to get in and get out. Just don't whip the door open. I'll have to kill someone. Um, the only thing holding my B-Peller sheet metal on, that 316's plate, is um, there's a metal, there's a tube inside here, it's all plug welded too. There is a tube that goes across the dash, and there's really nothing from here down until I connect this and make some other kind of support in the back. That's why it's kind of flimsy if I would just whip it open. If somebody whips it open, I'm going to have to kill them. Almost, huh? How's that curve looking? Hmm. 
But it's raining. It's been raining for like two days now, and it's supposed to rain more. I have yet to mess up my dash pot. It's freaking pouring now. I still gotta get rid of that junk. Can you hear it? I am not gonna make it to the house. I just have to stay out here and work on the car. Alright, well now that I know this hinge works, I gotta spend more hours making the other hinges work. Oh boy. But... I know what the spacing is. I know how to get them to lean in a little more, and out a little more. And all should be good. Now it's just the details. I cannot believe how much is gone on this car. There was nothing left. That's how much was trimmed off the door. And I understand I'm missing running boards and fenders and all that stuff is gone. It was really rotted. Um, my running boards weren't even worth stepping on. They would disappear. The fenders fell off, literally fell off the wheel well. I had it towed home. I thought one of them for sure was going to rip off in the wind, but it didn't. And I've since fixed all those holes that they went to. Uh, front fenders were fair. I gave one to Don. The other one was sold off. Um, so we got about a quarter of an inch there and nothing up here and about eighth inch right there. So we're going to have to lean in the bottom, which will lean out the top, and then lean in the whole door towards the steering wheel. I wish it's a paint. But this was one of those tack plates. I put a piece of sheet metal over the top and just did four little tacks on both sides, holding it away from it with a piece of uh, eighth inch steel. And that's how I got my body to stay together. I'd love to stay up, but I only got like three hours sleep last night. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. Uh, remember that frame rail is five inches. Yeehaw. Okay, guys, you have a good night. I'm going to take a few more pictures, and uh, I really got to go in and lay down. Or maybe I'll do some later on, but I got an appointment for the wife's car for a sticker and stuff like that, too. That's why she got the new tires. But yeah, I thought it was cool. The tire guy screwed me out of two tires, so I screwed him out of four. As they say, payback's a bitch.